Hello, hello, hello. Now in this video, you're going to learn how to set up Yoast SEO WordPress plugin. And Yoast is one of the most popular WordPress plugin out there with over 5 million active installation. It is the most popular SEO plugin out there. And there are many other SEO plugins out there, but if you are looking for a single most recommendation, go ahead with Yoast SEO. So here is how you can start installing and configuring Yoast SEO plugin on your WordPress website. Now this is going to be a detailed video. So if you want to grab a cup of coffee, please go ahead, grab the cup of coffee and then come back and watch this video. Now, quick request, if this is the first time you are watching Shout Me Loud video, then do like and subscribe to our channel. It would help us to grow. Now with that, let's go ahead. Let's log into your WordPress dashboard. Go to plugins, click on add new. And here search for Yoast. Click on install now and make sure that you are installing the one with more than 5 plus million active installation. Click on activate. So this will install and activate the plugin and all right. So now click on the start first time configuration. Click on this. So very first thing it checks for if your site is indexable or not. And according to Yoast SEO, your site is indexable. And then click on continue. So now does your site represent an organization or a person? Now, if you're creating a personal blog, let's say if I'm creating something for Harsh Agarwal, which is harsh.in, I would use it person, but this is an organization. So I'll use organization. Okay, now here's the next part, the logo. And I believe many of you have the logo ready. If you have the logo ready, just simply use that. If you don't have the logo ready, what you can do is you can use this website called Brandmark. And here I've used it and created just a sample logo. I'll probably hire a designer later on and get the proper logo done. So I'll just simply copy paste this logo. All right, so logo has been saved. Now what I'll do is I'll go back to the settings, select the file and that's it. My logo has been added. Perfect. Click on save and continue. Now, if you have already created social profile like Facebook, Twitter, or you can add another social profile if you have, you can add it right now. If you don't have it right now, you can leave it and you can come back later and here under the social tab, you'll be able to add all your social profiles. So I've not created social profile yet. So once it will be created, we'll be moving to the next step. For now, let's just skip this space. Now, do I want Yoast SEO to track my usage and I don't want them to track my site data. So I'll just keep it as it is. Do I want to sign up for Yoast newsletter? I'm subscribed to Yoast newsletter already with my email and I think they add a lot of value. So if you are not accustomed with Yoast, you should definitely subscribe. Enter your email, click on sign up and then you're subscribed. And that's it. Finish configuration. Go to your SEO dashboard. All right. So the first part is done. Now let's dwell deep into the configuration part of Yoast SEO. So these are some of the features that you can enable or disable. You can always click on this icon to see what this particular feature does. So SEO analysis, I want it. Readability analysis, I like it. Corner store content, again, this is very useful. Text link counter, again, useful feature. Insight is actually a premium feature and link suggestion is another premium feature which is available for Yoast SEO premium. Now, if you're just starting out and if you have a new website, you're okay with Yoast SEO free. But if your website or blog is already profitable and you're making significant amount of money, then you can consider upgrading to Yoast SEO premium. There are some free alternative to Yoast SEO premium that I will talk about in the days to come. But for now, you can just leave them as it is. XML sitemap is very important. This is how we'll submit the sitemap to Google. This is how basically Google will discover our website in a better way. In this video, I'll show you how you can submit your sitemap, how the entire thing work. Admin bar menu if you want or not, I don't want it. So I'll click off. No advanced or schema settings for offer. I'll put it off. Usage tracking off. So I'm not sure what that is. So I'll keep it off. And Slack sharing if you're so if your article will be shared on Slack, Slack is one of the very popular messenger used in an organization. 
you can keep it on and off so for now i'll keep it off and click on save changes all right so now we just configured the features part now comes the integration part if you have a SEM rush subscription you can enable this integration if you don't want that you can keep it off venture integration you can keep it on or off i'll keep it off right integration off and click on save changes Right, so integration part we have configured. Now next is Webmaster Tool. Now this is where things get very interesting and takes a little time. So very first thing, these are the different search engine. Baidu is a different search engine. Bing is a different search engine by Microsoft. Google, you all know google.com. And Yandex is another search engine. So to be able for this search engine to properly discover your website, like if you are creating multiple blog posts and pages, the way Google discovered this website is by using XML sitemap and you remember in the feature part we have enabled this feature called XML sitemap. So what we need to do is we need to create an account in Google search console, Bing Webmaster Tool, Baidu Webmaster Tool, Yandex Webmaster Tool and submit our sitemap. Okay. I'll show you an example with the Google verification tool and if we have time then I'll do the same with Bing Webmaster Tool. So let's go ahead let's do this. Now click on this. It might ask you to log in with your Google account since I'm logged in. It just logged me in. Now here click on HTML tag. Copy this part which is under the double quote. So just this part. Okay. And paste it here. Simple. And click on save changes. Right. And now click on verify. What it should do is it will check if this tag is available on the website. Once it is available, it's perfect. Now you have just completed the verification of your website, but you have not done the entire different part. Maybe we will talk about how to configure Google Search Console for your WordPress website in the next video because that is a topic for another day. Similarly, you will go to Bing Webmaster Tool, add your website there and verify using the same method. This is how you configure all the Webmaster Tool. And first time configuration is what we have done. So this all looks good. And if you have made it so far, congratulations. Now let's go to search appearance. Now we are doing a deep dive of different settings of the website. So now what do you want your homepage SEO title to be? For example, and you see like what my website is showing. My website is showing the website name dash and my tagline. So this is pretty decent, but if you want to change it and if you want to use something like professional services and then And that's it you know like you can add meta description up to 160 words so pretty much that's it you can configure your home page title and as i showed you that is how it would be changed now social image so i'll just add an image the image that i've created but you can create a better image if you like and we'll just copy this now you need to understand where this will be used. When a person is going to share your website on social media, this social setting part would be used. Whereas search engine would see this part. For example, when I search for shout me loud, this particular part shows up and this is the meta description part, right? Similarly, what's happening here, like this is the meta description part and this is the title that would be shown at this spot. Perfect. Now we have already configured the knowledge graph and schema. So this is all good. Click on save changes. Now we can click on content type and do we want to show post in search result? Of course we want post to show in the search result. That's how we'll get traffic. Now in SEO title, I would remove everything and just keep the title and meta description is empty because that is something which will be configured when we are writing a blog post. Now everything goes default, nothing need to be changed. In the pages part again, I'll just remove everything and just keep the title as it is and click on save changes. Now comes the media part. 
at times when you add an image to wordpress blog post or you know a page sometimes it adds the attachment url which gets indexed in google search which is not good for your you know seo so basically this feature remains as it is this feature will redirect those attachment url to the attachment itself so it's a good setting you should keep it yes now this is very subjective for a lot of people i personally like to keep my categories indexed if it is done the right way if it is configured the right way if you are just starting out if this is your first time creating a blog and you are not sure what this is you can keep it disabled or enabled that's completely okay you can always change this setting it's not going to make a lot of difference but tag is something which i always like to keep it disabled so i'll just keep it disabled post format i'm not sure what this is so i'll keep it off for now and remove the category prefix you can keep or remove the category prefix depending on your goal so if you are structuring your website right from the day one you can remove the category but yeah you can keep the category prefix as it is and click on save changes now comes the archive archive is if you want your author archive like author archive would be more, something like this so if i click on harsh agarwal name it would show me all the post by this particular author and that's author archive i can go to page 2 page 3 now personally i don't see they add a lot of value to the search engine so i'll keep it off similarly date archive i'll keep it off special pages click on save changes but again this is very subjective depending on what is your level in the term of seo some people like to keep it on you know if they have multiple authors and they want to encash on the credibility of the authors they usually keep it on also so again this is very subjective now breadcrumbs this is what breadcrumbs looks like let me show you with an example this is what breadcrumbs looks like and if you know my title is this but my breadcrumb is unique and this is exactly what i do and usually its target keyword is what you can use as your breadcrumb so this is how the breadcrumbs look like and you can change the anchor text for the home page so i'll change it to the brand name and if your brand has a keyword you can use that but i'll just keep it the brand name for now if if you want any taxonomy like your category or tags to show in the breadcrumbs in this case no so everything stays as it is and then click on save changes the only changes that we made is the anchor text for the home page and pretty much that's it this does not require anything so click on save changes now comes the next section which is social you remember when we were setting up the yoast plugin for the first time it was asking us for the social profile which we did not had so we left it as it is now this is your chance to go ahead and create your social media profile for facebook for twitter for linkedin for instagram youtube wherever you want to bring your social media presence even if you're not planning to like you know maintain all the social media network but it's a good idea that you create a social media profile and add your website url because it helps you to build those you know free backlink from a high quality website so again this is very helpful now once i have created my you know facebook and twitter profile i would make most out of this so pretty much there is nothing much to do you can basically create your pinterest profile and confirm your site with pinterest it adds open graph metadata setting and if you have already confirmed your website with pinterest which you can do using you know by uploading a file on your web server you don't need to do this but if you want to use this feature you can do this again these are the some of the features that you should definitely do like it's not mandatory that you do it right now but if you are doing it for a client it's a good idea that you should do it right now now let's go to tools there is nothing much here so we'll move ahead premium is something that we don't have right now so so guys this is what it is if you have done it so far congratulations that you have configured your yoast seo plugins on site seo setting okay this is on site seo setting now when you are creating a new blog post like you know you go to post add new here you will see this option called yoast seo and here you will be creating a different on page seo setting so whenever you are creating a blog post you would be creating you know a different setting for the entire thing and i would love to talk about it 
but i think like it would make this video too detailed maybe if you really want me to make a video on how to optimize a blog post using yoast seo plugin drop a comment like this video share this video with others tag me on twitter at den harsh and if i get enough request i'll make another video where i would show you how to optimize your blog post using yoast seo plugin and that would be on page seo so i hope this video has helped you and if you have any question about yoast seo plugin configuration or installation let me know in the comment section below if you want my team to take care of look into your yoast seo setting you can always drop an email to harsh at shoutmila.com with your query and if your query is genuine and something i if i could i would love to help you with that i would see you in the next video bye bye this is harsh mm -hmm.